Jeffrey. Mike. We're, ba- we're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we're back. I'm giving you the Dota education you so richly deserve. And I just wanted to point this out before. Look how look what a good teacher. Oh yes, I am. No, I, I'm I'm friends with you on Steam. Believe me, I know where to find you on a Saturday night. That is true. <laughs> that is true. You know, I am a pretty cool guy. Oh yeah. I'm generally out yeah. at the clubs, I just leave Dota on. To make, <laughs> yeah, it's make it. you think I'm not. We are going to talk a bit about, uh, well, a bit more about the international. Right. I thought some one of the best ways to show you would be actually some in-game stuff. Yeah, sounds good. To let you know like what goes on, and it also kind of follows up back to our conversation that originally prompted this, which was with Mark, um, and talking about how a tournament that's seventeen million dollars gets funded. Right. Right. So here we're gonna make some some motions again. So if you want to see that, check out one of these corners, and then if you want to see our talk previously. About the history of the international and why you should care. One of these corners. Perfect. <laughs> Jeff is so good at this. Um, so we're in in the client right now, and there's actually a newer client that's available, but the old client is kind of the de facto. This is where everyone goes. So, yeah. have you have you ever have you even installed Dota on your computer? I might be installed. I've okay. Never opened it. <laughs> so what happens here is actually you're going to get all your news about it here. Right. Now, the big news is about items because as you can tell like this this whole tournament is funded on on things that you buy in game. So they're actually letting you know that there's more stuff that you can buy of in course. case you haven't bought enough <laughs> of stuff. Course, of course. Um that's important. But the big things will also come here as well. Um the previous story was about the brackets. So yeah. I had mentioned before that if you were interested, the the group stage before is kind of it's not really noob friendly. Okay. Um, it's there's lots of matches going on. They're all playing at the same time. Like um, at any given time, there's three matches going on. Okay. Um, so it's a lot to follow if you don't know what you're looking for. However, with the main event, the brackets are all one match is going on at one time. There's a lot of ramp up for it. Okay. So what we've got here. Um, there's 16 teams, so they play the group stages to determine the order of upper and lower brackets. Okay. So what we've got here are our upper seeds and then our lower seeds. So obviously the advantage of being an upper seed, realistically, you only got, you know, what is this, one, two, right. three matches, and you're you're in the international Right. if you win out. Um, but if you don't, and you start at the lower bracket... You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, right. six matches before right. you kind of get there. That's more common with video game tournament brackets. Yeah, right? there's not, I mean, with, with something like this, there's not like a season or anything like right, that. Right. Um, and because there's so many variables, I mean, you look at a sport like, like hockey and baseball, mm. um, football. Well, football's probably a bad example because they do the one and done. Right. Um, there's so many variables that it's hard to say if you win one game, it doesn't really prove anything. I mean, right. you could have had this kind of pocket strategy in that, that you know, threw the team off, right. but you're still, you beat a better team. Uh, with any of these brackets, they're generally best of three. Uh, okay. So they play three games. The winner, they're essentially the one that, that gets the two wins, is okay. going to move forward. Because, again, they kind of remove that element of chance. Did you just right. get lucky once? Well, I mean... Most right. some teams get lucky twice, uh, but this is this is the kind of thing. And what's really cool about it is last year at the international, you would assume that these guys that's going to be a tough run. Last year, the te- one of the teams that made it started in a loser bracket file oh, wow. and blew through the whole thing. Wow. So it happens. It definitely mm-hmm. happens. These are all sixteen. These are the sixteen best teams in the world. There's probably hundreds of teams in the world. But these ones are the best. Right on. So that's going to be what you want to, you know, what you want to check out. And again, that's all going to start on Monday. Okay. Um, but this is kind of the thing I wanted to show you, and this ties in both of our conversations. So the compendium is what's driven both the prize pool up and the kind of the love of this event with okay. the community. So the compendium is a book you buy. In the store. So if you go to the store here, mm-hmm. um, I'm pretty sure the compendium uh, to buy it is is twelve forty nine. Okay. So it's probably ten bucks 
American because our exchange rate is terrible. Right. Hello, Canadians. <laughs> um, but you can also, and this is probably what I did at the time, buy the th- the the forty dollar one or the thirty thirty four dollar one. Start you at level fifty. Okay. So this book has levels, like it was okay. a JRPG superstar. Right on. So what the levels do is, as you increase in level, you get more stuff from it. So the goal is to kind of either grind through some of the challenges of the stuff that's in the book, right? Or just buy your way into fame. <laughs> of course. It's kind of like life. Yeah, you can yeah, do it yeah. the hard way, or you can <laughs> just get some money. <laughs> The other thing that's in there, um, there's coins which you can trade in. Um, you can also purchase the coins, but more often than not, people are just winning the coins. So once you buy this, you get a bunch of different stuff, um, some items that we don't go talk about, but the book is what you get. And inside the book is all sorts of information about the event. So it talks about the prize pool, right the event, cool. all this kind of stuff. So... It is a really cool kind of game within a game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the big thing that's going to tell you is, of course, the International is coming. So the first part of all this, the thing that starts the hype train off, is Valve told you, and you can ignore the left side for now, Valve says, these are all the teams out there that we're thinking of inviting. Right. They said, of the 16 teams, we're going to pick 10. So in that case, it makes it a little less like... um, the Super Bowl or the Stanley Cup because those teams, well, the teams that go aren't chosen by the league or right. former winners. They right. played the season, they won. Um, this is more like the Masters in golf Fair where enough. there are ways to play yourself into the tournament, but generally speaking, you're selected because right. you're already you know considered right. top tier right. of this. So they picked 10 teams and they, they told us, us being fans of the game, take a look at these. Who do you think is going to win? So these were my picks. Right. And I, I did 8 for 10. I would Not say bad. it's respectable. Yeah, I would say so. Um, and they trickled the, the release of these to say, oh, every two hours they released a new team. Kind of, It's kind of cool. Again, Valve really smart at knowing. Yeah, they know how to keep you coming back. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So whatever. And, and all of these things gave me points that leveled up my compendium. So when okay. I chose and got a right selection, I get some points. Levels up my compendium. Uh, what's here is all the things that Valve said, hey, if you get the prize pool to this, we're going to give this to you. So, for example, when we collectively put in $4.5 million to this thing, they're going to give us a new loading screen. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. As you can tell, we get pretty good stuff. Yeah. Ooh, loading screen. So, well, at $5.5 million, we got a new heads-up display. Oh, I mean, that's $5 million well spent. Yep. At $8 million, they unlocked the ability for us to generate more content for them. <laughs> and, yeah. So, okay. so as you can tell, okay. like, and even though these themes, these things seem ridiculous <laughs> to, like, an outsider, any, <laughs> any new content in the game... Right. Is really cool, especially when it's um, some of this stuff. It, even as a fan, is is dumb to, <laughs> to me. So I will admit. Uh, but there are cool things like um, this one is going to sound dumb, but eleven million for <laughs> desert terrain. Uh, oh. What's cool about terrain is it actually affects the whole game. Okay. Um, so it's not just this like you know a lot of these things are like couriers or like things that are specific for heroes. Right. Um, a new terrain actually changes the way the whole game looks, which is it's kind of cool. Okay. Um, it's also a little distracting. So generally you, you use it once and you're right. like yeah it's kind of cool and then you turn it off and never use it again. But I do think those are kind of cool. But this is where the actual money is. So people buy the compendiums. That's all great. But what they really want to do is level it up. So, yeah, I've spent a a little bit of money. All right, yeah. I would say this is probably about $40 worth of... Okay. And I I watch enough of the International. Uh, I hate to say I've I've watched it at work. I don't actually watch it. Put the headphones in and listen to the commentary. All right. Um, So I get... uh, I get my $40 out of it just fine. But what you'll see on this page is there's actually an effect for one of the heroes. And you need to be at level 175. Okay. So if you do the math, if you bought the $50 compendium and then you bought 24 oh, levels you each. you keep buying those levels. Yeah, I mean, right. yeah, yeah, you can earn them. 
doing some of this stuff, but there's not enough stuff to do to earn you 175 right, levels. So right. you're going to have to pay a little bit for it. So if you do the math, I mean, if you start at level 50 and then buy basically... I like how it's 24 levels and not just 25 as no. well. Wow. They know. They know they what's know. up. Yeah. So regardless, this is where the cash is yeah. coming. Yeah. Um, and this is the whole list of things that that cash will get you. Okay. A lot of it is treasures, right. so you get these in-game items to make yourself look cool. Okay. Here we've got all of the challenges that I haven't done. You see, I get check marks by the one I did. I got really excited when this first came out. <laughs> and, and then I forgot to do anything else. <laughs> um, and then I bought some more stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like that. And then okay. I haven't done that. <laughs> um, but see, there's more, now more challenges for buying new stuff. Right. So I'll probably do those. There as you, you can tell, the, the kind of running theme <laughs> yeah, of mine. Yeah. It's sad because I do watch all of these games and and you can link your steam profile to your to the twitch client so you can watch in game or you can watch through twitch like most right. other kind of esports or streaming right, is right. done uh, the advantage i like to twitch i i like twitch chat it's right. pretty toxic but sometimes there's there's some some gems that come out there um but the other thing is they do like um like kind of a lead up show to it just okay. like any other you know big sporting event right, show would have right. they talk about the teams the strategies what we could see you get some expert opinion on it right um i really enjoy that i like the insight that that gives to the game okay. um but when you watch in the client you don't see that right so um generally i watch the twitch but i haven't linked my profile yet so okay. i have watched probably enough points to get all these and as you can see there's actually a lot of points it probably wouldn't yeah, make more sense would've, to do that been valuable but well, you know me Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know me. The thing that I really like, and this is actually the, the reason that keeps me coming back for the compendium, is the in-game challenges. Okay. So how they did it this year is really cool. So you get four challenges at any given time, mm -hmm. and they're set so that I think once you do one, it takes three days for a new challenge to show up. So if I blew through all four challenges in a day, I'd have to wait three okay. days. And there's no pay extra to get them. That It's just... You gotta wait. You gotta wait. Right uh, but they're really cool. They don't, they don't change maybe your strategy in game too too much, which is good because sometimes if, what events will come, they really kind of throw off the pace of games. Right. People are doing this thing instead right. of playing the game. Right. right, um, right. What this does is it kind of more so orients what hero you're gonna pick to okay. match what challenge you want to do. Okay. Um, so some of these are very specific for like this would be really like favor like a pushing kind of lineup. This favors getting a support that actually will get money. This favors picking a hero that can get the kills. Okay. And then this one is just play this hero. Some of the challenges are, are better than others. Um, but you can do all these, and then once you do it, you get some coins, which you can trade in for items later, which is kind of cool. Um, and this is where it was. So I bought a few different sets for this. So if you get a 1,000 coins, you can get a set. If you get 100 coins, you can redeem for an item. I think the set's a better deal. I like having the cool, complete right, the set, complete set versus enough. one item. The other thing it lets you do is you get a 10 hero challenge. So at uh, it picks 10 heroes at random and says, play a game, win a game with this hero. Right. Which is kind of fun because oftentimes you get set in your ways and you just play right, one hero. Right. Um, and then this is all, this is the stuff that people want. So okay. these are the things. You get sparkly hair for one of them. Ooh. You get a little ward that he puts out. Right it looks on. very nice. What's cool about the items is they also are particle effects. So in-game it changes the animation. Okay. And those are the items that the people that are playing, those are the ones they really want to see. Okay. Uh, because it spices up the game, how right, it looks a little right, bit. Right. And then again, more sets, more sets. What do you want to buy? pick some teams this is all not interesting the part i want to get to is at the end where it actually talks about the teams right, cool so the teams um they get a little brief bio you can see the hero and they they look terrible honestly this is a poorly put together this year <laughs> um i don't enjoy how it looks but it is cool because they kind of talk about the team so if you're not familiar with them you can kind of have a look right. and and go from there but again what i would suggest if you're interested in the teams uh head back to our first video and check out where we pointed out um where you can actually go see the backstory right. that's a lot more interesting than what you'll get out yeah, of the compendium like it. um so yeah so that kind of goes from there as far as the games itself so i mentioned you can watch from the client 
So if we do that, um, all of these games are from the group stages here. So I'm just gonna gonna go pick a, a game at random here, right. and we're gonna load up into that. But while I'm doing that, did you have any did you have any questions about what's going on or anything, Jeff? Uh, no, I mean it looks all really interesting. The the compendium um, is extremely intriguing and probably genius marketing as well um, but yeah I can see why you know players and people keep coming back to it right um, it's designed in a certain way but um, the reward is there and I mean you know you know I laughed at like loading screens and all that but it's it's it works right it makes perfect it sense why they would do it that way right and I mean when you're comparing it to other sports like you know it's goofy these are goofy things but what is uh, yeah. you watch a lot of hockey? What's yeah. what's the NHL sent you recently to watch? Watch yeah. some hockey? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that, that's that's perfectly fair, right? Um, and you know, you still pay for those, you know, cable subscriptions, or you watch the advertising, or you're buying the merchandise. Like, so why not get something in return? Yep. Um, why not say have a say in in the tournament, um, and who shows up, who gets what? Like, I think that's uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. So what we're doing here, we're loading up one of the matches that was from it. Um, just because I talked before about how there's kind of really two big parts to right. um, to a Dota match. Now, I've got the headphones plugged in so you won't hear any of the commentary. Um, we're going to pick the English one because I would assume most people that are watching <laughs> our channel are not our English speakers. Yes. So this is what happens at the beginning of a game here. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I don't think you really want to watch... A painful amount of time but this is the the pick ban phase so this is where the game starts this is where again there's over 100 heroes so what they're picking and banning out are either heroes that a team is known to play very well okay. or teams that are, are heroes that are currently really strong in this patch because okay. the kind of what's called the meta in the game changes with patches and different things as people kind of play heroes and discover they fit into different roles right um, this becomes a big thing. So do teams ever, like, fake each other out by, like, sandbagging a certain character? All or, the time, uh, yeah. And oftentimes what will happen to some of the top teams is a team will entirely base their picks and bans on completely eliminating the hero pool of one particular player on that team. Right. So very often um, that happens in what's called the off lane. So generally how the lane, you know there's there's three lanes yes, in a match. Yes. So there's the mid player generally is a one-on-one -on -one matchup. In what's called the safe lane, you put your, your hero that's probably going to have the biggest impact, your what's called your hard carry, in with a support player to help that player out, make sure that they get built up enough to right. get generate some steam and get going. You, from there, either have another support that will stay in that lane or someone that will be in the jungle. And it's often more common to have another support. And those supports will sometimes leave them and go to the other lanes to help out okay. other players. But the last one you have is what's called an off lane. Your off lane is what goes against the other player's hard carry. Okay. And off lanes probably need the, the, the most specific set of things in a hero. They generally want a hero that can is either really, really tough, um, that can stick in a lane for a while because they're going to take some punishment and they know it, right. or they want someone that's quick and agile that can get in and get out. Okay. Um, and that really narrows down the pool specifically. Right. So oftentimes what a lot of teams will do is ban out the off-lane players that they know okay. another player can, uh, can play. And that really affects how the game works. Um, so for example, in this case... Um, Generally speaking, Undying is going to be Team Secret's offlane. He's a pretty tanky guy. He can stay in there and take some punishment. Okay. And he doesn't need a whole lot of money, or what they call farm, right. in the game to get himself going. So that's kind of where, the, where some of the strategies lie. Some of the other strategies you'll see is um, what's called respect banning, um, where teams will ban out specific heroes that they know are played extremely well by a, a specific person. Right. Oftentimes, uh, it's this hero, Wisp, that will get respect banned for um, a lot of teams. Okay. Uh, one of the classic examples is a team called C9, or Cloud9. Um, they've got a support player called Big Daddy. He is fantastic with a Wisp. Yeah. They'll get the respect ban quite often. Right on. Um, 
So it, there's these kind of little micro strategies that go on, and that's why I said starting in the draft, if you don't know these things, yeah, yeah. you're not going to get anything out of it. But we're going to slow it down a little bit here since we're actually in the game. Um, but this is essentially what you're going to see when you watch in a game. So they're going to show you. Now, again, I, we'll leave kind of the commentary like low in the background so you can actually hear um, what's going on. And because of that, I'm actually going to put that back down to one so they don't sound like chipmunks. Um, but this is the kind of thing. So you've got directed view. In this case, since I'm watching in the client, it's going to show me all the things. I can come up here and change what kind of strats right. or st right. stats. stats stats thank you <laughs> words are hard man uh, the other thing that's really cool is i can change the the view of it so right now i see what the both teams see right um but if i'm interested you know if i want to look at what the radiance so this is they have no idea what's going on all of these dark areas right right they can't see because obviously you can see the whole game it's not going to help right a whole lot but this is kind of what you're going to expect okay. when you take a look at the game. Very cool. And that's kind of yeah. where it all goes. No, no, that was great, actually. That uh, provides a lot of insight into um, the international and and what it's all about and why players are, play, why they're into it, and um, the community behind it, what really keeps it going, what drives it. Obviously, money's a big part of it, but like the community involvement... Um, is clearly huge and like you were saying like Dota's not as big as some of the other MOBAs yeah. out there but um, I can see why the fan base is so uh, loyal because like the reward is 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 there and um, you know if you're gonna invest your money I can see why people would choose to invest it here and and this is the thing I mean there's the international has had so much success with how they run this particular style of tournament with yeah. the compendiums with the bonus stuff that it's spread out into other tournaments. I so, can see that, yeah. so um, things like uh, they recently had uh, what's called DAC, which was the Asia, the uh, a tournament based in China. Right. Um, again, more so to feature some of the Asian teams, but uh, international teams were invent or invited to participate. They had a kind of mini compendium that went along. Right on. Not, the rewards weren't as great as this, and with those tournaments, you know, Valve is a lot more reluctant to kick in and yes. offer a change of terrain or something right. like that. But you still get items. You can still see all the heroes. Um, MLG has had its own compendium. Yeah. Um, again, all of these other events. Uh, I believe the Summit, which is kind of its own um, community-run tournament, um, also has compendiums and stuff wow. like that. So it's it's obviously a, a formula that works for Dota. Uh, I'm not sure how well it would work for others because it kind of really relies on the community to... To want to be yes, part of this. Yes, clearly. So, how about it, Jeff? You think you're gonna? I, I'm, you want to come over and watch it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yeah, I think maybe we'll do that. We'll, All right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely come over. We'll, we'll, we'll watch it and uh, and see it. But yeah, no, that was great. It's, uh, extremely intriguing, and uh, uh, you know, I kind of get it now. I kind of see why. Um, you know, it. Everyone's so so into it and so loyal to, uh, to the game. It's hard to be, with how this goes, it's hard to be a casual fan of it. <laughs> and they really, and that's, I think yeah, that's probably some enough. of the success. Like, yeah. you know, you can, if you're, if you're not on top and staying with everything, you're going to miss a lot of it. So yeah. there's not a whole lot, there's a lot of people that know about Dota and then there's a lot of fans. There's not a whole lot of in between. Right, fair enough. So, so yeah, well hopefully that's not only helped you yeah, hopefully. Into the world of Dota. Maybe you've got something. If you guys have questions, by all means, let us know in the comments. In this video or the first, any kind of question you have, I'd be more than happy to answer. And uh, if the question maybe requires some more explanation, I'd be happy to, you know, bring me your Dota questions. I'm ready. <laughs> if you bring me lead questions, I have nothing to offer. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Mike. Jeff. Thanks for watching. Peace.